All right, uh, we're going to talk about the TCP IP stack, and it's very, very similar to the OSI model. If you remember when the OSI model, I had said that the OSI model describes all networks, not just the networks we currently use. Well, the TCP IP model was written specifically to IP networks, which is what we use nowadays. So it is a lot easier to understand. Um, it's also known as the TCP IP stack or the DOD model, and the reason why is the DOD came up with it, so Department of Defense. Uh, it is an alternate to the, T to the OSI model, and it's much more relevant to the way our networks are designed today because most of our networks are TCP IP based now, and this model directly talks about how that works. The nice thing about it, there's only four layers as you can see on the screen, right? Four layers is a lot easier to remember than seven layers. The bad thing for you is you have to memorize seven layers plus four layers, right? Because you got to know both. So uh, how does this map out? Well, if you take the bottom two layers, the data link and the physical, and scrunch them together, they become the network interface layer. If you keep the network layer, it becomes the internet layer. If you take transport, it's easy, it's still transport. And you take the top three layers, the application, presentation, and session, squish them together, they become application. So in the DOD model, or the, uh, the TCP model, it is the network interface, the internet, the transport, and the application, okay? So what that really looks like for us is network interface, is going to be your physical and electrical characteristics of the network. So this talks about our bits again. How are we transferring data across the network? And we're talking about how are we going to connect to the network medium? Are we using coax, fiber optic? Uh, are we using twisted pair cabling? What kind of network are we using? Uh, things like Ethernet, Token Ring, FIDI, right, the fiber distribution network, uh, or RS-232, which is the old serial cable connections. Those are all ways that we can talk about a network interface. The other thing we deal with with network interface is that old layer 2 data link stuff from OSI model. So, route, uh, excuse me, so switching is handled here as well. So MAC addresses and switching is all handled at the network interface layer. So it's layer 1 and layer 2. We're taking the physical and the beginning logical and smashing them together. The second layer of the DOD model, of the TCP IP model, is internet layer. And this is what we call the network layer in OSI. So here we're dealing with routers and IP again. So we're taking our IP datagrams, which has our source and destination IPs, and we're forwarding those datagrams between different networks, just like we did before with routers. And so we're routing our IP datagrams across networks, and this connection, connectivity occurs external to our local area networks. This is where we get into our wide area networks as well. Things in this layer are going to be IP, ICMP, ARP, and reverse ARP, because again, we're dealing with that IP protocol layer. Next, we're dealing with transport, and transport just carries over from the OSI model. So it makes it very easy. If you remember it from before, it was layer 4 before, now it's layer 3. Uh, but it provides communication between hosts, so we're dealing with TCP and UDP, as well as the RTP, which is the real-time protocol, which is used for vo voice. Um, these are all used, they're doing your service and status of connection for transport. So all that windowing and buffering and flow control and acknowledgement and connection flow and connectionless, that's all still happening in transport. Nothing has changed. And then the final layer. We take the top three layers of the OSI model, which was our application, our um, presentation, and our session, and we slap them all together and call it application. Uh, in this layer, we're dealing with how the programs interface with the transport layer services and how the user is going to interact with it as well. So we got our HTTP, our Telnet, FTP, SNMP, DNS, SMTP, TLS, SSL, we're doing data types here, we're doing our session establishment and disestablishment, we're doing applications, and we're doing encryption. All of that stuff in the top three layers are all being done in the same layer here. So really, if you understand the OSI model, it's pretty easy to understand TCP IP. You just got to remember that the bottom two layers squish together, the top three layers squish together, right? And that becomes your four layers. And that is your TCP IP stack.